Hello and welcome. Today we are in the Tier 9 US battleship, the Mighty Georgia. We're playing on the map Greece, and it is a Tier 7 to 9 battle. Two destroyers, four cruisers, and six battleships. We are top tier, we have excellent secondaries, and one of the fastest ships in this match. Which is why, since I spawned in the middle, I headed straight towards the enemy. And the plan is to turn around once I make contact, as I did right now, take a few shots, and then back off. Because this should also make my enemies back off, and perhaps will make the life of my destroyers slightly easier. I basically followed my Udaloi over here, and hey, we actually ran into an Amalfi. We weren't able to really ward off the enemy DD as we can see, the B cap is locked, but we are going to get a few salvos off on Nevermind. I wanted to say on the Amalfi, but I kind of forgot that she had a smokescreen. If I had been slightly closer, then that smokescreen wouldn't be all that helpful, but as it is right now, that Amalfi played quite well. It's alright though, because this still drew some fire from the enemies, which meant that they didn't shoot at some of my allies. And as a battleship that has five heals, on top of that, the heals reload very quickly. The cooldown is short on the Georgia. It, I think, was a very good maneuver, because I got to tank a little bit, and then I was safe again. You know, right now, there's nothing that's really threatening me. Oof, that hurt actually. But I mean, she's not going to be able to repeat that, right? And on top of that, I'm not really at risk of being sunk. The only real risk would be a destroyer in basically that general direction I'm looking at. If she launched the torps from that direction, then I could be in trouble. But they don't really have a DD like that. Especially since we knew that one of them was in the B cap and it would take a long time to reposition over to where I was at risk from. I guess there is technically the possibility of a second DD, but I'm sure they're also afraid of our destroyers. Although maybe they know where the Ben- never mind, they know where the Benson is, so perhaps not. Ooh, we landed a Citadel on the York. But it seems that the fight is going to be cut short on this side. There's no way an Amalfi and the York are going to push against uh, pushing Soviet Kisoyuz, uh, an Admiral Hipper, an Algerie and the Benson and potentially the support of an Izumo and a Georgia. So I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna start heading um, closer to the enemy again. Georgia doesn't have the greatest range, but also because maybe I can catch the Nagata off guard that's in the middle. You see, fighting a tier 7 battleship as a tier 9 battleship is extremely beneficial. Well, even tier 8 battleship. Especially if your um, battleship main caliber is above 380 millimeters because then, or included as well, because then you can overmatch the 25mm bow or stern of the enemy battleship, that is the Nagato. And this is why Nagato is pretty much a glass cannon in these kinds of matches where she is up tier. She might have 65,000 HP, only 9,000 less than I do, and she might have decent armor, but because she cannot angle against me, she is a pretty good target for well, the Georgia. On top of that, we're close range, which means that my secondaries will add on to that. Oh, and she's broadside now as well. Come on, Nagato. Oof, 36k. Well, I think Nagato's days are numbered now. Yeah, and the fire from the secondaries to... Damn, that guy's really unlucky, but that's what he gets from pushing into my destroyer. And now we can do a follow-up because it's very difficult for the Nagato to disengage because we can overmatch her. And goodbye, Nagato. Okay. Now the question is what to do next. I could try to push in, but I think this wouldn't be a good idea. We're gonna take a few salvos on the York to try to finish her off. Really should launch a scout plane here, I think. But whatever, I'll try. I think I needed slightly more lead though. I could push in, but I don't think I want to do a man fight versus a Friedrich der Grosse. Especially since they have a Mogador over there. Oh, and she even launched torpedoes at me. Yeah, this is... Turning away is a very good idea here. 
and Spidey's senses tingling was quite useful. Yep, let's launch a plane now. Let's lead slightly more this time and hope for the best. Two overpens and that uh, York will be gone. Oh, Friedrich der Gross is gonna be in secondary range. And, uh, and she's actually pushing in, which means that I can disengage from her while secondarying her. Also, goodbye, York. Two overpens is all it took. But problem is that Friedrich der Gross's secondaries work against me as well. I wanted to use the smoke screen to sit in it a little bit to just secondary the FTG, but unfortunately the smoke was ending. I think in a straight up fight like we are in right now, the FTG would win, which is why I'm going to just try to disengage. I'll get behind islands and maybe just secondary or main battery salvo her from behind the islands. The priority should be at least for me though, on firing at other targets, because an angled FTG is kind of hard to deal much damage to. Unless you're firing HE, of course. And hey, there's a perfect Lepanto over there. And since I have my scout plane up, I can actually take a salvo on her. I do think we're gonna give up the B cap, but that's alright. We've held three of the four caps for quite a long time, and we're already taking one of their other caps. Uh, slightly too much lead. Also, slightly poor RNG, but mostly it was too much lead. Four minutes until we win. They are gonna take the B-cap though, so we, there's not much we can do about that. Oh, Mogador actually torped the Admiral Hipper on our team. Well done by the Mogador. And Ibuki actually took out our Nagato. Okay, so this is more of a game now. Both sides have lost four ships, although I think they're gonna lose the Lepanta soon. At least if I have anything to say about it. Our Zara did go down though. And this actually puts the enemy at an advantage in the numbers. Interesting. But we've held for the caps for quite a while, so I think we still hold an advantage. But positionally, if you look at the minimap, the only ship that can fight the Lepanta over there is the Rune. And the next one is me. There's absolutely no other ships on our team on that side of the map. Which is why we're probably going to lose the A-cap as well. Secondaries are going off on the FTG, that's pretty good, but honestly I really should be heading more towards our rune, which is which is what I'm trying to do. Perhaps we can finish off the Lepanto, maybe not, but at least we should be able to pressure them from that side of the map at least. You see, one of the biggest worries tends to be when the enemy ships get onto our side of the map, you know, to the north on this map and then are able to crossfire into the where like our Izumo is because they obviously are going to push and it's going to be quite difficult to push if the enemy is also in the northern section of the map. Oh, three fires. Might be kind of wasted to try to even fire on her, but I want to make sure that she goes down. Oh yeah, she did damage on here. Lepanta did damage control party, but you can't damage control party out of battleship AP. FTG also went down, that's very good. Now we are in an advantageous ship number position again. It's uh, 7 versus 6. Both teams have both destroyers still left, so well done by the DDs and two cruisers. So we hold one battleship in advantage. I'm gonna use my speed boost and start heading towards the ACAP. And as I do that, I'm gonna try to take some shots on the Izuma. Or whatever else ends up in range. Okay. Oh, there's the Ibuki. Oh, very nice. And she's gonna be somewhat broadside. It's gonna be very difficult for her to angle against me. She's she's gonna have to show broadside either to the Izumo or me. Although the worry is that the islands are gonna block vision, which might make it very difficult to actually um, land shots on her. Oh, I think I didn't lead enough. Yeah, I think I didn't lead enough. That's unfortunate. Yeah, I definitely did not lead enough. That was such a waste. That could have been such a beautiful salvo. I do need to worry about the Ibuki torpedoes. Uh, we've engaged the North Carolina in front of us, but as long as I keep angled against her, I should be safe-ish. Although Izumo could also fire at me. But the main worry is Ibuki torpedoes. She could have launched them at some point in the past, and I have to be quite careful of it. 
That's why I'm playing a little bit with my speed. Okay, Ibuki was actually taken out. That's very good news for us. But the torpedo threat still remains. It might come at any time. Although I think our game is not at risk from that. Ouch, Izumo. That really did hurt, you know. But my focus now should probably be on the NC. Okay, there are the Izumo or Ibuki torpedoes, but we managed to avoid them. Very good. So the fight will be with the NC. Hmm. 20k HP on me, 33k on the NC. I suppose it'll depend on who angles how. I think we're gonna end up with a close pass. I was hoping that NC would make a mistake here and turn her uh, broadside towards me, but no, she has not. Even though I can technically pen, or get some penetration sometimes, not all the time. And what I'm doing now is incredibly risky, because the NC can do the same to me as I did to her. Minus 31k HP on her, please don't hit me. Now we need to turn away, so that we are angled against the NC's follow-up salvo. And then we simply use our rear turret. Oh, Didn't manage to take her. But she is gonna go down to the Udaloi. Goodbye, NC. And now it is time... By the way, both of the enemy DDs are still alive. I wanted to say it's time to try to go for the Izumo, but there isn't enough time. 10 seconds, well, less than 10 seconds to go. Until we cap out. And there it is. This was a really excellent game, I think, for the Georgia. I managed to push a few times, I pulled back when it was necessary, I did a whole bunch of damage, 188,000 even, got a high caliber and a dreadnought, 149 secondary hits, and I even got three citadels. I only did get 1776 base XP, but that's mostly because I am top tier, I ended up fighting a lot of tier 7 ships, tier 8 ships, and you get less XP for that. Okay, by the way, look at my damage, 163k from the main batteries. Only 17k from the secondaries, but the fire should be added to it, so it's roughly 24,000. Look at that, look at how many different ships I got hit by. I think that's like 8 or 9 enemy ships, almost the entire team at some point or another managed to hit me. Except the DDs, I suppose. So, let's take a look at the uh, commander skills and upgrades that I used. I don't know if I recommend these, these are simply what I came up with. So I went with Emergency Repair Specialist, then Grease the Gears obviously, then for the Secondary Range, especially on the Georgia, then Concealment Expert, then Close Quarters Expert, because if an enemy is within my Secondary Range, I am able to get better reload on my main batteries and it also buffs the Secondaries. I don't really recommend the improved secondary battery aiming upgrade or commander skill because it's only minus 35%. And then I got the um, whatever the new superintendent is. Note, do note that I'm at 19 points and I have one point left over, so I could technically get another tier 3 skill. I would either take Adrenaline Rush or uh, the basic survivability or whatever the new alternative of it is. But yeah, emergency repair expert does feel really good. But yeah, either basic survivability or adrenaline rush for the last three points for me, I think. Right now I could take something like consumable specialist, but I don't think it's worth it. So, let's take a look at the uh, upgrades as well. But it's the same that I used all the time. So I used the dispersion upgrade for main batteries, mostly because I don't want the uh, negative effect of the traverse speed. Then concealment upgrade, then I use damage control system modification too because you have a speed boost so you don't really need propulsion and also because I don't have basic survivability. Then secondary battery range, by the way note this, maximum dispersion of secondary battery shells, minus 20%. The tier 4 skill for the captain is minus 35%. Then here I use engine boost, if I didn't have that, obviously damage control and in the first slot auxiliary armaments. Mostly because this makes secondary survive slightly longer. But you could also definitely go for main armaments modification 1. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support. And I hope I'll see you guys next time.